Do, do, do. What's going on? We've been trying to troubleshoot this. <laughs> oh, here. I see. This is like... <laughs> <laughs> and it's like it doesn't recognize him and he just keeps like yep. going in and out like a phantom. Wow. That's a that's that's amazing. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> He's here. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we'll just go with it. All right, let's start at the beginning. How about you guys introduce yourselves? I am Kill. I'm Peiko. Good to see everyone, except not seeing you. <laughs> <laughs> I guess just you, Dom. <laughs> oh, man. So I... Uh, so... But you guys together work together under the name uh, Caterpillar Toys. Yes, sir. Or sometimes, or sometimes the Caterpillar, or sometimes Caterpillar. Yeah, any of those work for finding us, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, CJ, let's start with you. I met you first. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Back in the day. Like 2007 ish. 2007 ish. And as far as I can remember, I mean, there's a huge thing now, like every show we have psychedelic tribute pieces. I mean, every show there's someone either that we're organizing or not. Um, everyone, every resident artist in their career, you know, has to do some sort of suck lord tribute figure. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, I think you were the first one. Maybe. Right? You had your... I had uh, the, the goddammit. It. Your goddammit figure. Yeah. And That's then you created your... What was it called? The suck damn it? The suck damn it. Yeah, it might have been. I don't even remember how long ago that was, but it was forever. That, that was a long time ago. Yeah, man, yeah. Yeah, that might have been the first one. I never thought about it. <laughs> and then how did that go down? Like, how... how let's start at the beginning. How, how long have you been making resin toys? Um, about 2005, I think. So you started back even, you know, around when the Sucklord was doing it. Were you aware yeah, of his work? It, um, when I first started making stuff, the only two guys that were really making resin that I was aware of were the Sucklord and then, um, Lemaire was doing more like sculptures, but those were really the only two resin guys anybody was paying attention to at the time. And mostly, uh, when I first started making stuff, there was no information online how to make stuff so actually i was i got a lot of stuff on a star trek kit bashing website like because there's still <laughs> people that did like accurate figures not like tributes or weird bootlegs or anything right. like the only thing that was going around that was anything like that is i remember a lot of guys were doing like topless slave leia kit bashes and stuff like that at the time hmm. but weird stuff like that but yeah like the suck lord was pretty much the first one i saw doing like nice carded figures and stuff uh weird stuff this is very disturbing talking to a disembodied person yeah i don't i don't know it it picks up on her maybe it doesn't want me here my, is that but, no you, you know what's kind of funny about it is like and we'll talk about this later like the figure that you did for the Wait, back to the go. future show is <laughs> this That's kind of funny. Yes. <laughs> it, it was is on purpose about it's all part of the art uh-huh <laughs> inadvertently or intentionally yes yes um so how did you what was it like when you approached him like how did how did you meet him did um, you just email him and like hey i want to put a suck lord helmet on my toy like how did that go down and i don't even remember i know i know the first time i met him was probably at your table back when he oh, was yeah? wearing the costume and slinging paint on stuff at the convention mm. and were you and did we already know each other then? Um, I I think so. I think so. No, I I really don't remember. <laughs> it was so close to there. Like I I know that I first started going to San Diego in like two thousand three, and then mm -hmm. like all the the uh like the kid robot stuff and whatnot. I feel like started showing up about two thousand four, and about two thousand five is when I started making stuff, and you were there. I think. My date could you, be a little bit off, but that's how I how I remember the timeline. Can, 
And did, when you were growing up, did, were you drawing? Were you always an artist? Were you always doing creative stuff? Not really. Not too much. Customized a few random action figures, but not really in any capacity. I was always told I was bad at art. And at art teachers tell me to not even attempt to do the projects that were so bad. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> That's awful. <laughs> yeah, I had an art teacher in high school tell me that it just don't even try anymore. It's so bad. Uh, I, he's like, you just don't even understand. You need to not even do this. <laughs> well, I, I think when we're done with this interview and post it on YouTube, you should email it to that dude and just be like, hey, <laughs> fuck you, dude. <laughs> I'm for real. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, are you working on art full time? Do you have another gig? Um, not not really. Just, uh, you know, buying and selling collectibles a little bit on the side, like always. Mm -hmm. That's before I was making toys. That's definitely what I was doing. I know that's what you did in the beginning, too, going out and buying stuff to resell. I, I still do it. Yep, I do, too, a little bit. It's not it's not as uh, easy to do as it once was because everybody's doing it now. Well, I mean, there's Pop Shop Live, you know, where you can just <laughs> log on and like just start selling your garbage out of your garage. It's like exactly, it's uh, life has changed. Um, so, and then when do you two meet up? Oh gosh, about nine years ago. Yeah. yeah, about nine years ago, a friend brought me to uh, Red Hot Robot for one of his shows. It was uh, when he did his Tenopus final, and huh. yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> the rest was history. You yeah, just fell, you just you just fell in love that night, and it was like boom. <laughs> Yes, it was it's <laughs> mainly because of her that I'm able to do the the nicer bootlegs now because she does most of the uh, the backer card stuff and all the uh -huh. the online and the drawing and stuff because I'm terrible at that. I would I would not be making as nice as stuff because <laughs> I, I cannot draw at all. You've, you've I, I think that's a I think that I was a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so tell us, uh, Rebecca, how do you have you been doing art your whole life? Yeah, when I was uh, real little, some of my earliest memories are watching uh, Star Trek with my mom and drawing little horrible comics in the background. Mm -hmm. uh, I was always the quiet kid that was just drawing. Um, you know, when my dad used to take me to the zoo or a museum, I always had a sketch pad with me and I would just sit and draw animals. It was, uh, it was a little bit quiet, it was a little bit weird. And um, have you been doing um and then have you had creative jobs or have you always been doing this on the side how does no, that work i never really had a creative job i i got my bachelor's degree in art but before that i was in um science so i was really close to having a biology degree i worked in a natural history collection and then my life got flipped up like upside down and i ended up in the film industry but i don't do anything creative in there either so this is a nice outlet for me I know lots of people in the film industry and it kind of like uh it consumes you it does uh, I don't know if you heard the interview the other day we have a neighbor down the street who I met not as my neighbor I met because she hired us to appraise a collection for some collectible show that they went to people's houses and like embarrassed them for all the stuff that they had and I had to like do these appraisals and she she makes soap and um it's so funny it's like it's like the one thing that she has that she can she can call her own there's other people telling her what to do all the time she's got like just no time to do anything and then when she has a moment to herself she can make this soap and she's like here is my mint and saffron soap that i made with chunks of sandalwood or whatever it is like she, she <laughs> makes this soap and she's just like that's like how she can, that, that's how she credits being able to survive in this like highly stressful job. You have uh, similar feelings, I suspect. Very similar, I think. <laughs> it's just a very nice outlet, you know, kind of let myself go, just listen to some music or an audio book while I work. And it's a total brain shut off, which I really have a hard time with normally. Because mm -hmm. I know usually when I call you, 
I feel like uh, you tend to usually... tell me like during huge uh, work conventions when I'm in Berlin or in France or <laughs> I mean even now I just got through two weeks of nonstop Zoom meetings with clients so you caught me on a good day I had like a crash of twelve or fourteen hours of sleep last night so I feel a little bit saner again and like I can breathe. Well, it's you. The reason that's happening is because it's most likely when you go out of town and you're on these like huge benders that like you're not responding me or meeting a deadline. And then I'm like, <laughs> to start to call you is like, hey, remember me? And you're like, Guilty oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, hey, I'm a pissed drunk <laughs> client somewhere right now. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right. So then you two meet up and you're both creative people and then you decide hey let's make carded action figures yes pretty much what, what were you thinking um i mean i, I <laughs> dabbled in it a little bit a bit before but i couldn't i couldn't make good backers or anything and it was harder mm -hmm. to get bubbles at the time which you've helped with that a lot you've helped everybody with that mm -hmm. but uh yeah, like I, I dabbled in a couple of pieces, but then I had some stuff I wanted to do and I didn't think I could cast it at the time. So I just had stuff racking up. Mm -hmm. And also there wasn't as big of a market in the beginning until, you know, people started becoming more aware of stuff at like uh, the conventions and stuff. Because before it was, there was no area where you could just go see a bunch of it at once. Right. So, That's true. But like, you know, it's been consistently last like every few years it gets more and more popular so it's more worthwhile to make it mm, hold on one second so just to explain is it the irony the coincidence intentional it's intentional so <laughs> so this is what you did for the back to the future show and then I didn't entirely get it right on Toy Geeks because instead of sending this in an email to me like a month ago, you like texted it to me like the day of. We usually don't say anything. So <laughs> your improvement. Because we always want all the information in the beginning, and the last, very, the very last thing I do is name pieces and stuff. That's the true. hardest part for me. She's always bitching at me at like three in the morning. It's like Dove wanted this yesterday. It's like I don't know what to name it yet. <laughs> Another day. <laughs> Yeah, and and I'm trying to like promote it, like and actually try to sell it. And, uh, and then I all right, so so th there was a whole backstory that you texted me about this that because everyone on the show looked at this and just seemed to understand the reference right away. Well, the, um, it's just the, the, the Star scary. Wars is yeah. just the it's just the Back to the Future. It's just the quote on the back that's related to the show. It says, right, okay, so you saw a movie about a guy who goes back in time and almost has sex with his mother? And is that supposed to, is that, is, is, is that supposed to be like a Mark Maron? Uh, yeah, that is Star Mark Trooper? Maron. Yeah, so we couldn't think of a name. And I mean, honestly, the last thing he always thinks of is the name, like we said. So the figures were done, they were pretty much packaged, and we still had nothing to call it. And um, we both really like the Netflix show Glow. And there's an episode, it's like episode nine, about 15 minutes in or so. And Mark Marin is doing bumps of cocaine with these two people who are working at a party. And he starts talking about a script that he's been working on for a decade called Mothers and Lovers. And as he's pitching it about a psychosexual, semi-autobiographic drama about a guy who tries not, who has like problems thinking about his mom sexually and tries to go into the future where he can look at her when she's all old and gross, <laughs> but instead goes backwards in time and spends the movie trying not to fuck her. Like <laughs> the guy starts laughing and goes, yeah, man, I've seen that movie. And he's like, no, you haven't. I haven't made it yet. And he goes, it's back to the future. And it's real funny too. And he just gets this look on his face, this distant like blackness. And he's just like, fuck. <laughs> his, his and that's what ends up getting in Mothers and Lovers. Nice. Yeah, we just, we just put dumb stuff on there that amuses us because why not? That's good. And then... You guys have always had interesting technologies, I should say. Like, yeah, we off. always like to, to experiment. It. We wanted to do a full lenticular backer with uh, the figure there, but uh, it was it was 
like a time and cost prohibitive to get the size we needed. So we just did that as a Yeah, a we were going to do a four by six too, just like an old photograph. Yeah, and that was it was really trip. hard finding a place to print it. And the turnaround time was over a month. So we wow. found this place that did this size and went, you know what, might as well. Let's try it. It's fun. They're probably just doing them on big gang orders and like everyone gets this size. And... Yeah, something like that. Yeah, we plan uh, we we really limited that one. Um, there's barely it's pretty much that run and then like a couple APs for us. Yeah, so that's it on this. That's one. it. Yeah. But yeah, we always like to do something extra, like either a promo card or the metal backers or something. Metal backers. I think that's what people know you for most are the metal backers. Yeah, I very... can't tell if people like the metal backers or not. Yeah, we weren't sure. We kind of stopped at some point. <laughs> I like them. Well, I think they're neat, but yeah, I don't know like if it's too much for people sometimes. I don't. I've never met anyone to complain about it. I think it's an interesting selling point. Um, I don't know. I think they're cool. We'll have to revisit them again. Yeah, especially now that we figured out a way to do like an actual back on those because it was kind of a mystery for us for a while. Yeah, yeah. Because you were because you were doing a sticker. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't a good sticker either. It was just you know we would plan our signatures. We 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 would use like printing labels to do a quick sketch on it too. Uh, Ian says here, how was it meeting the dude from Raw Papers? Oh, <laughs> that was all you. <laughs> yeah, no, there, there was like a, a weird, uh, like a. I, medical... I don't even know what that means. Oh, there's a uh, raw rolling papers. They're like super, super popular rolling papers. Like mm -hmm. people don't like zigzags anymore because they have chalk in them or something. So people like raw now. Anyways, we had like a weird like weed convention here in Arizona. He had like a <laughs> weed card, and I went to that, and he was doing a meet and greet. So I, I made a bootleg of him because he he's a big internet personality shows people how to roll joints and stuff but i made a a bootleg uh just like a one-off that i gave him and he posted it online a, a lot and stuff wow well yeah. you impressed the hell he out of me cool he that. was really excited he actually <laughs> took a video and posted it on his story and he was showing it to everybody and it was like two minutes long he was like a little kid <laughs> yeah he was a real nice guy wow so what what does the future hold for you guys? Is this uh, you're gonna make toys for the rest of your life? Uh, gonna... Yeah, um, we've got some comics too that we've been working on in the background. It's just, I mean, he writes all of the stories and I do the art. And I mean, I'm like a mix of married to my job and like a slave to it at the same time because it's not uncommon for me to do 50, 60, 65 hour work weeks a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and so yeah a lot of weekends. <laughs> waiting on her to draw art and then I have to make her stop to make backer cards constantly too. <laughs> and is so the the art that you do is sort of a creative outlet for the job that is not um, you would say very like artistically creative. Um, yeah it's nice I mean, I get to do it, what I love doing as a kid and just draw I mean, occasionally I don't have the time, so we make really horrible backgrounds and then just mm. like take photos of the figures and use that instead, which is also kind of a fun, creative uh, background. Yeah, if we run out of time, you get the, the generic Uze style, just photo back. <laughs> right, I have, the, I, have the one, <laughs> I have the one piece of art that you did, I think, and I bought the original from you. You just took a Sharpie and it looks like it took you like 10 seconds. So oh, the you little... I told you that took me like a half hour, maybe 45 minutes. <laughs> There were pencils and that was the inks. <laughs> I told you. I suck at art. <laughs> it was Amazing. Very difficult. I understand it looks like a four year old did it with their foot. Uh, look, I bought the original art. <laughs> hey, I know. <laughs> I'm just telling you, you keep saying 10 seconds. I wish I could do that in 10 seconds. Right. Uh, so, I mean, what's the end game? Are you, are you going to gonna keep the job? and then do this on the side or have you achieved the perfect balance where you can support yourself and then be as creative as you want on the side no i would say um i really love my job and i'm passionate about it and it's fun but it's also not the love of my life it's like a relationship you're kind of forced into so i have a lot of fun with it but you know, not having time for myself and the constant level of uh, pressure and stress for everything that I do uh, really takes its toll over time, especially doing this for six years now. Mm 
Um, so I would say I would prefer a little bit more of a balance and to be able to really have time for myself, not only just for art, but also for me. So I would say the, the end game is definitely finding a better balance or a better route in my career to be able to find balance. Hmm. What about you, CJ? Um, you, you just, you're just in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I would, I'm trying to get ahead this year on, I've got like a bunch of stuff. So I'm already molding and cast. Next year, we have cast, a bunch of stuff yes. cast right now. Got like two I, guns already I wasn't, I was impressed when you called and you said, Hey, we already have the thing done. I'm like, okay, can you send it? It's like, ah, well, we still need to do that. It's like, okay. My goal is to have it all done months in advance this time. So when, by the time the convention comes, I can just say, how early do you want it? And then you wow. Just, that's going to be next year. We'll see though, if that works. But so far I'm already working on three runs of things. So amazing. So yeah. next year, next year we have shows. We're not doing New York Comic Con anymore. Uh, we're doing DK Econ here in March. And then we'll do July, uh, we'll do San Diego, either in person or here, and then Decon. And I think eliminating New York and, and, and doing a show in March will mean that we won't have the three shows just all crunched up at the end yeah, of the year. We'll have one, one every four months. Yeah, the New York and Decon being so close is crazy. It's killing me. It's killing everybody. So. <laughs> And it's not good for the customers. It's not good for sales. That we're basically abandoning the first six months of the year in sales, yeah. and then just dumping all of this stuff on the market all at once for people. So, don't I don't think it's ideal for anybody really. So, well, guys, I I really appreciate you taking the time. I know that CJ that that doing this was that she had to twist your arm to do this, but yeah. you found a way to you know obscure yourself enough <laughs> you, know, you know i get anxious having to talk yeah even at the convention in person i'm not <laughs> um i think you're a little harder on yourself than you need to be but uh i think you you came up with a perfect workaround i was gonna wear a mask and disappear every few seconds <laughs> yeah, i don't know what's going on with that that's driving me nuts <laughs> <laughs> well Thank you guys. I really appreciate it. Keep up the good work. And we will talk to you soon. All right. All right thank you. Right, have Bye a great dad. night. Take All care, right, guys. Somebody beat me. Somebody <laughs> <me> beat me. <laughs> oh, man.